In this video, I will introduce you to the insulation requirements of IEC 60601-1. Managing the insulation diagram in a proactive way helps you design a medical device that is safe with respect to exposure to electrical hazards and meet project deadlines. At the end of the video, there will be a link to a free template that you can use as a guide for your insulation design. Hi, I'm Klaus Rømer. I'm an expert on the 6061 standards at Medical Device HQ. And I'm a member of the technical committee 62 that authors these standards. This video comes from my online course, Introduction to Safety for Electrical Medical Devices and IEC 60601, that is available on medicaladvicehq.com slash 60601. If you don't want to miss out on more premium content from our online courses, subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button and click the notification button. Not only will you be kept up to date with what videos we publish, but you are also helping us reach out to more people that work with medical devices. I hope you will enjoy this video. Let's get started. In this video, I will introduce you to the insulation requirements defined by the general standard. Insulation is one of the methods to protect patients and operators from electrical hazards. To ensure that your device is safe in single fold conditions, in general, it shall have two means of protection to prevent leakage current from applied parts and accessible parts. Each means of protection is categorized either as operator protection or patient protection. The requirements for patient protection are intended to provide a higher level of protection than the requirements for operator protection. Insulation can be provided in the form of solid insulation, creepage distance and air clearance, as well as by components. When you consider your design, you shall expect short circuit of any insulation that does not meet the requirements for a means of protection. Components are exempt from testing if you have identified the component as a critical component and demonstrated that it complies with a relevant component standard. Creepage and air clearance is measured physically or in a CAD program. The measured distance are compared to the minimum requirements defined by the tables in the standard. The dielectric strength of solid insulation is tested by applying a high voltage across the insulation. Additionally, if the peak working voltage is greater than 71 volts, there are additional requirements to the physical construction. To comply, it shall have a minimum thickness of 0.4 millimeters, or it shall meet some alternative requirements. For insulation other than wire insulation, the insulation shall be effective over the expected service life. Considering environmental stress such as mechanical wear and tear, heat and moisture. A secondary circuit is separated from the mains part by at least one means of protection and is subject to reduced requirements. A secondary circuit can also be supplied from a battery. For F-type applied parts, all patient connections shall be separated from all other parts by means equivalent to one means of patient protection for a working voltage equal to the maximum mains voltage, which can be more strict requirement than the general requirement of two means of patient protection for a working voltage equal to the voltage in secondary circuits. This next example could be an infusion pump, which can be classified as a type B applied part, because the patient connection through the fluid column is not intended to deliver electrical energy 
or an electro electrophysical physiological signal to or from the patient. Here, the patient connection shall be separated from metal accessible parts, such as a metal stand, by one means of patient protection at working voltage. This was the first part to my introduction to identification of insulation requirements. Later, we will look at how you identify the specific test requirements. There's a template on medicaldevicehq.com that you can download for free that will help you identify and manage the insulation requirements for your medical device. Before you get to the link, I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button. If you want to learn more about safety for medical devices, I welcome you to register for my online course, Introduction to Safety for Electrical Medical Devices and IEC 60601, through medicaldevicehq.com where I will take you through the requirements and teach you how to work efficiently with insulation design according to the requirements of the IC 60601-1 standard. Use the link to get the template on medicaldevicehq.com. I have a question for you before I go. What do you think is most challenging about designing insulation barriers? I'm really curious to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments field below. Thanks for watching.